Now to a thrilling experience for us all here at Wimbledon. I'm delighted to say that we are going to speak to the astronaut Drew Feustel, who's uh, been enjoying our coverage from space. He's at the International Space Station. And uh, this is a first for us here at the All England Club. Welcome to Wimbledon, Drew. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We understand there may be a few seconds delay, but Mats Volander and I are sitting on centre court. Where exactly are you? Well, thank you for the great welcome. It's uh, it's fantastic to join you down there in, uh, in the UK and at Wimbledon. I've been watching from space. Right now we're flying over the eastern United States, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Drew, this is Matt uh, here. Uh, tell us about the mission you're on so far. Well, hello, Matt. Uh, great to hear from you. Uh, I've been in space for about three months now, and I still have approximately 90 days to go. Uh, the mission has been busy, as all missions are. We spend our time uh, working science each and every day. We have uh, had three spacewalks while we've been here, uh, two visiting vehicles that we call cargo supply ships, and we have another one arriving tomorrow. So every day is filled with either operations related to science or uh, maintenance and upkeep of the space station. But we're certainly staying busy and. Uh, and, uh, but occasionally you find time to enjoy some of the activities we normally would on Earth. And for me, that includes watching, uh, watching tennis live from, uh, from Wimbledon. Um, what's, uh, I mean, for a tennis player, obviously the highlights is to, uh, to play at Wimbledon on the center court. What are the highlights for, for you up there in space? Like, what would you look forward to the most? Uh, well, just about everything. I mean, the fact that we're floating in space is pretty amazing, and that's something that we all enjoy. That never gets old, and, and really looking down on planet Earth is uh, very spectacular. Uh, there are new, no views like the ones that we see from here. Uh, it's really a privilege to be here, and uh, we look forward to completing the mission. And uh, spacewalks are fun as well. I, I enjoy going outside in the spacesuit and, and uh, performing work on the outside of the space station. All these things we do are just very special, special locations and it's really a joy and pleasure to be here. Um, we also understand that you are carrying some precious cargo, some commemorative coins. Can you tell us about them? I can. That's a great, uh, that's a great lead in. So what I've got here, and I think you can see one floating in front of me, is uh, I believe these coins, the intent is uh, they're medallions to be used for the uh, coin toss uh, next year, 2019, for the finals. And uh, really quite a journey for, for, uh, to get them here. But uh, they are here now, and uh, we look forward to bringing them back to Earth and returning them to the uh, All England Lawn and Tennis Club. And hopefully they'll uh, get utilized for next year's championship. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, when, when you think of Wimbledon, what's, what are the highlights or memories when, when you were a kid growing up watching Wimbledon? What's, what's so special about Wimbledon for you? Well, to me, uh, Wimbledon is really about iconic tennis, and uh, I think it really serves as one of the foundations for tennis around the world. Um, it's a great inspiration to watch tennis. It always was, and uh, not only for me, but for, of course, my, my wife and her family were very huge uh, fans of tennis and still are and very active in the sport, and that's really what got me into it. Um, but we enjoy uh, watching Wimbledon, and uh, it, to me, it's just a, a, an, an annual ritual to sit down and try to catch the matches from Wimbledon and see how all the action unfolds. It, it cannot be a good job for, for your tennis, because I believe you play some tennis when being up there for six months. Obviously, you're not hitting any tennis balls up there. So what, what is your tennis like? Uh, as my wife would say, my tennis is a work in progress. I consider myself a sparring partner for just about everybody else. But you're right. Uh, one of the challenges of being here is that we don't use our bodies the way we do on Earth. And uh, for that reason, uh, we exercise, spend about two and a half hours a day doing exercise, resist resistive exercise and uh, running on treadmills or using the exercise bike. It's important for us to use our legs while we're up here because otherwise we don't. We typically use just our hands and fingers to move around. So it's important for us to stay fit 
and try to keep that, um, keep our bone uh, density up and keep our muscle mass uh, uh, strong and, and complete so that when we return to Earth, we can actually work uh, back in what we call a 1G environment or the gravity that we feel on Earth. Um, and last year, I believe you had a, a visit to the Royal Box. How was that experience? Because I have never even been to the Royal Box, Drew. Matt, I have a hard time believing that, but yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was a uh, a little bit fortuitous. Uh, my colleague uh, Tim Pete, uh, who is a British astronaut, uh, was there with us and. Uh, uh, we really were fortunate to have an opportunity to be in uh, England at the right time uh, when Wimbledon was happening and uh, had that wonderful invitation and uh, just really enjoyed our time there. It was quite magical. Uh, got to meet some wonderful people and uh, enjoy some great tennis on the Friday before finals. So you, you're following, following this very closely. What do you think about uh, women's champion and the men's champion? Who, who are your favorites this year? Mine are pretty clear. I think Selena's too. I yeah. think we're thinking <laughs> Roger Federer and Serena Williams. But uh, what do you think? Well, you know, Matt, uh, with the visibility of the work we do up here, it's tough for me to pick favorites. And so I'd like to say that it's always uh, inspirational to see the uh, the uh, players come along and uh, and and uh, generate some upsets and make their way through the uh, through the draw. And uh, I'm not going to call a favorite, but just say that uh, you know tennis is a joy for me to watch, and it's always a thrill to see the greats play like Serena and uh, Roger and uh, and Rafa. And uh, it's really been enjoyable this year watching uh, watching all the action develop. And we look forward to uh, next week. And I'm going to definitely find some time to catch the action and hopefully see it live from space. And Drew, we have a couple of questions for you from social media, questions that people have submitted and wanted to ask you. Um, what about players you loved watching growing up? Well, Mats was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, you know, Mats, I realize you and I have uh, just about have the same birthday. I think you're about a year and three days older than me. And uh, so you'll have a, a birthday coming up just before the, uh, the USTA championships there in uh, Flushing Meadows. But, uh, you know, um, I just enjoyed tennis, uh, watching tennis and, uh, and certainly watching McEnroe and some of the greats play. They really were the foundation for the game. The game has changed a bit, uh, but in the end, it's all about, uh, I think, a game of prediction and probability. And uh, the players have such a keen sense of uh, the angles, uh, the trajectory of the ball, and the speed of their opponents. And that's what, what's neat for us because it brings the science into it, uh, the science of the game, the physics of the game. And really, that's what's key. And in fact, for us up here in space, that's what makes it hard to play tennis is because we don't have gravity to help us with the uh, bouncing the trajectory of the ball so it's all straight line shots only uh, not a lot of chance to uh, create angle and uh, create uh, you know challenges for the opponent because uh, the, the ball's only moving in the straight line exactly the place that you hit it um, Drew, would you ever swap um, space rocket for a tennis track and become the Wimbledon champion or, or as being an astronaut was a, a dream of yours when you were growing up I, Matt, I would say that each of us is born with certain skills, and mine, uh, my best skill is not playing tennis. It's, it's okay, but it's definitely not my best, and so I, I think I'll leave the, uh, the tennis expertise to the champions, um, those who have devoted their life to uh, doing that work and that sport and being an inspiration to the youth to get out and be active. And for me, I'll stick to uh, science and floating in space and, uh, and being up here working on uh, the space station. Um, I wouldn't trade it, but I certainly enjoy and appreciate the work that all the players and athletes and, and organizers do to keep the game moving forward and uh, keep it uh, relevant in the world today. Drew, do you ever play tennis in space? Do you get a tennis ball out and throw it around? Uh, that's a great question. We're actually planning to uh, have a game in, in space. We have some very small tennis rackets, uh, and uh, that was coordinated with the, uh, with the USTA, and we're going to see if we can pull off a game here at some point. Um, as I said before, without the assistance of gravity, it's going to be kind of tough, but we'll take it easy up here and uh, see if we can put on a show nonetheless. And of your homegrown American players, who are you most excited about watching? Because I know you've been watching our coverage, so who do you enjoy?
Well, uh, you know, the other day I, um, I actually enjoyed watching Rionic play, and uh, he's a Canadian player, and uh, it was quite neat to see him uh, advance and continue on, and uh, he's, he's definitely uh, somebody that I enjoy watching, and, uh, well, we'll just see how it unfolds. Um, again, tough to call a favorite because you never know um, who's going who's gonna to be the upsetter this year, but uh, I'm sort of rooting for them all and uh, just look forward to some great action. What, Drew, what do you think of t uh, tennis today? Obviously, it's completely different from, from when you and I grew up and they had a bunch of servant volleyers. You could be a baseliner. But today, what, what, what do you think of, of, uh, of tennis today compared to when we had more contrasts of styles back in the 70s and the 80s? Well, obviously, you know, the rackets have changed so much that I think what's the difference is the ability to put power uh, into the ball and to put that control on the ball. And again, as I mentioned, it's it's become a lot more of a science, I think, than it has uh, been uh, compared to in the past where it's more of a... Um, more of technique and finesse. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of finesse in the game now, but the players really have the ability to create that with the technology that's been developed into the rackets themselves and even the strings. And then the, uh, you know, the minute changes you can make, for example, in the string tension and even hand grip size. I mean, all those things play into a, a, a player's uh, 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 toolkit of uh, tricks or, or um, techniques that they can use to take advantage of the other players and uh, and end up with the win. But uh, you know, so much more speed in the game. It's just amazing to see some of these shots. I mean, uh, you know, just just watching the, the players go on and some of the some of the points that go on and on and on. It's just amazing that. Um, the opponents can continue to return the balls until you're just waiting for somebody to make that one mistake, but they just go on and on. It's, it's incredible to watch these games. Drew, you're obviously very knowledgeable about tennis. Are there other tennis fans up in space with you? How much of our coverage are you able to watch? Are you going to tune into the finals this weekend? Well, you know, so far I've watched, I think, five games in space over the course of the last uh, week. It's been a week or so. Um, we have the ability to uplink some uh, TV channels, live TV channels. So I've watched a few games in replay. But uh, this weekend I'm hoping to see the games uh, live coming up through uplink. And, uh, and we do have other fans that will uh, occasionally stop by to see how things are going. And we're all excited whenever a final comes up of anything. I mean, it's true of baseball, uh, racing, soccer. The World Cup was just on. We had a lot of us uh, really cheering for the, the teams there. And uh, maybe not the outcome all of the, uh, all of the uh, inhabitants of the space station were hoping for, the, uh, our uh, German crewmate and our Russians. Uh, but still a great game and, a, and great to watch uh, all these different sporting events on the ground. And uh, this weekend, it's Wimbledon's turn. And we're loving your T-shirt, Drew. What's the story behind that? Well, you'll have to ask the All England Lawn Tennis Club, but uh, both the shirt and the uh, the coin were provided uh, by the folks there at Wimbledon. And uh, the idea, you know, for us is to um, generate interest in what we're doing in space and with science and technology. And uh, we like to try to make the association between the science and technology and physics of tennis and uh, the science and technology that we use on space station, things that affect, uh, you know, us just living and working in space. Uh, we talk about trajectory. We talk about speed of, uh, of the ball, and for us in space, uh, a spaceship is just like a tennis ball falling around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour, and gravity is that thing that's helping it curve around the planet, just like a tennis ball when you hit it uh, has that velocity and falls to the ground and makes that bounce. Uh, it's all the same physics, and so we're trying to create that awareness between uh, the links between science and sport and, uh, and so that folks can be interested in, in all facets of, uh, of what we do up here. Well, Drew, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us uh, from space. That's a first for us here yes, at Wimbledon and a real thrill. And we can't wait to welcome you here to the All England Club next year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Drew. Thank you both, Matt and Serena. We, uh, we look forward to continuing uh, watching the matches and wish you all the best in the, in the coming week and all the players as well. Good luck to everybody. Thank you.